Okay, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Welcome to Crystal Cove State Park. We have a really fun program for you guys today. We are joined with some of our Crystal Cove State Park lifeguards, and we're here today to talk to you about one of our favorite programs that we offer out here in the summertime, our Junior Lifeguard Program. And we are here today to answer any questions you have. Hey, Monterey Bay Aquarium, thanks for joining us. We hope everyone will help spread the word about our awesome program here. We're trying to get our children more acquainted with the ocean and they get to be alongside our lifeguards every day out here. So do you guys wanna go ahead and introduce yourselves um, and tell everyone who you are? Hi, I'm lifeguard Sarah and just wanted to remind everyone to make sure to swim next to an open lifeguard tower. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm a lifeguard supervisor here at Crystal Hill State Park. Uh, I'm Ryan Spazier, I'm a lifeguard too. I'm one of the coordinators and instructors in our junior guard program. I'm lifeguard Brennan, lifeguard too. Open out with the aquatic program. Awesome, thank you. So does anyone have any questions about our junior lifeguard program? Hi from Ireland, thank you for joining us. Question about drones. Um, do you want to take that one, Kevin, our drone policy? Sure, so we have a lot of people that come here to recreate with drones and we always remind them to obey the laws which are uh, to not disturb any other people or wildlife here at Crystal Cove State Park and to not do any kind of commercial photography with their drones. Um, so what that means to me is you're interfering with someone's peaceful enjoyment of the park while they're here to just take it all in and maybe do some sunbathing and you're flying a drone overhead that's interfering with their peaceful enjoyment of the park, so we say that's not allowed. We always tell them to try to give a, a good buffer zone between other people and wildlife. And our our park has 2,800 acres, so it's a pretty big to, park. There's, yeah. There's a lot of wildlife here, so there's, a, there's limited drone opportunities here, but but there are helicopters, so you might be hearing that one fly by. We get a lot of activity here, and we are in Southern California. We are right between Laguna Beach to the south and Newport Beach to the north. So we're in Orange County and the name of this park is Crystal Cove State Park. And we got a question about junior guards. All Someone's right. curious about how they can enroll their kids. Um, so your best thing is to go on the website. Uh, that's crystalcovejuniorlifeguards.com. Um, as long as your child is between the ages 7 and 15, you can enroll on there. Uh, there is a tryout. and. Uh, if you have any questions about the child, all the all the time standards are listed on the website as well, and they have uh, all the links and stuff for you guys to register. Perfect. Right so you heard it. Check out the website for more info. Um, we've got signs around our park telling you guys about it, and enrollment is currently open. I like to just go over the tryout requirements. Maybe that's something you're curious about. Um, but for seven to eight year olds, we have a, a 100 yard swim in the pool. And that's basically four laps in a long high school pool, a uh, 25 yard pool. And uh, the seven to eight year olds need to do that under two minutes and 45 seconds. For nine to 10 year olds, it's under two minutes and 30 seconds. For 11 to 12 year olds, two minutes, 20 seconds. And 13 and up, two minutes, 15 seconds. Then you go on and do five minutes of treading water in the pool. And then you swim 10 yards completely underwater. Nice. So we're looking for strong swimmers. If you know any right. strong ocean kids that want to learn more about lifeguarding, and I'll take I remember you guys. The first time I did my tryout for junior lifeguards back in uh, the late '80s, I'll just say uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was really nervous, and I tried really hard to train beforehand, and I got myself uh, a tank suit or a speedo, and got in the pool and just barely made it and oh my gosh what a good feeling when I when I finished the tryout. Yeah it's really good for kids self-esteem too it's a pretty prestigious program to be a part of. I was a junior guard when I was a kid. Were any of you guys else junior guards? Me too, yeah. Awesome and then now she's a real life lifeguard. <laughs> this could be you kids. I was a Wait. junior lifeguard here for uh, or at Huntington State Beach which is about 15 miles from here but we came here for a week every summer that's how I found out about Crystal Cove State Park for the first time. I came here, I realized this place was like nowhere else in the world. 
the smells, the feel of the sand on my feet. It's a pretty special spot. I want to show everyone too where we're at right now. A little foggy out here. But this is where the kids will be this summer, set up right in front of our main lifeguard tower here. We had a good question earlier about the educational side of our program. And I don't know if I introduced myself, but my name is Ranger Francesca and I am an interpreter here at the park. So my job is to run our educational programs. Um, so I'm helping them develop some programs and make sure we have some good curriculum um, for our students. And Hugh here has some of the artifacts that we might be using to teach them about the ocean animals that live out here. So what do we have here, Hugh? We have a red octopus that we find, if you're lucky, because they're like ninjas in the tide pools, kings of camouflage, if you will. And then we also have abalone shells. In fact, that point right there is called Abalone Point. How cool. <laughs> Used to be uh, littered with these guys, but they got overfished in the 1950s. Or yeah, so. late 60s and 70s. And now because of that overfishing, we have a marine protected area right out here off our beach. So that's another special thing about Crystal Cove. And we are teaching our students about the importance of marine conservation. And someone asked about the Marine Mammal Center and animal rescues. And do we ever help with rehabilitating injured animals or who do we leave leave that to? Well, yeah, Sarah we get can this one. <laughs> We get a lot of injured animals on the beach and uh, we like to preserve and make sure that we can protect them and so we'll call the Marine Mammal Center and um, often help them get them to their wildlife center and hopefully get full recovery. Sarah, have you ever wrestled a sea lion on the beach? I haven't wrestled a sea lion on the beach, but <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky business, yeah. These yeah, animals can be hundreds and hundreds of pounds. They are kind of tricky. It's not like yeah. SeaWorld, so we have to help with the, when the Marine Mammal Center sends a team down, oftentimes we're there helping, uh, you know, push that animal into a kennel so they can be rehabilitated. Yeah. It's very important when you see an injured animal on the beach not to touch it because that is, the humans can hurt them. Sunbathing and definitely their time getting away from a predator, so it's very important that humans don't interfere. Definitely, hello Danielle Pentec, thanks for joining us. We are at Crystal Cove State Park in Southern California. Thanks for posting the number for the Seal Rescue Center. And yes, mosquitoes and hippos are far more dangerous than sharks. That's one of our interpretive messages here, too. Question about beached whales. Has anyone responded to a beached whale here? I have. Uh, <laughs> actually, about a mile up the beach here, we had a beached whale a few years back. And what we do is uh, we we end up burying the whale here in the sand. Um, we kind of do you know what species of whale it was? It was uh, a. I'd say it was a uh, like a juvenile fin whale. Wow, that would be special. They're here though. Very cool. Don't quote me on that. Fin whale, gray whales. We even have orca whales out here. Very decomposed at that point. We can see a whale watching boat off in the distance. Right now, we're keeping our eye on the horizon always for the northbound gray whales. The mama has just had their babies down in Mexico, and they're on their long journey back north. So Crystal Cove goes for three miles all the way up in the distance. You can see Newport Beach and all this stretch of the coastline is Crystal Cove. So for our junior lifeguard program, they're out here on the beach every day. Um, and Ryan, do you want to tell everyone a little bit more about um, some of the activities these kids will be doing here? Yeah, so um, a lot of the activities, like Kevin said, uh, we have 2,800 acres in the park. Uh, it's a lot of diverse things, so we spend a lot of time mostly on the sand. We do have our backcountry, you can't really see it from here, but uh, we will take them back there and learn about stuff and go on hikes. Yeah, we're uh, in Southern California, near we're Laguna in Beach. California, yes. Uh, some of the, we have some of the equipment here. Um, so Hugh right here has uh, one of our mini boogie boards. Super uh, fun. Kind of use that to <laughs> body surf, it's a, another tool. Uh, and then we have a surf mat here, which is basically uh, <laughs> An inflatable boogie board. So uh, these kids love these. They go uh, really, really fast when you're when you're out surfing. Um, 
the getting them thing, to spend a lot of time in the water, right? They do spend a lot of time in the water. Uh, the other thing that the kids have the most fun on is uh, the Ever Classic boogie board. And the kids are out there all day, all the time on these boogie boards uh, when we're not teaching them about wildlife and stuff. Um, then we have different kinds of paddle boards, surfboards. Nice. Um, we will teach them how to surf um, if they are willing to and want to. And then we have our uh, competitive or competition paddle board over here that some kids will venture out on, go really fast. Um, but by far their favorite, favorite thing is JG Island, which is a 10 foot by 16 foot inflatable island that will uh, anchor out on like the buoy that's out there and they can jump off of it, they can run around on it. And we also have a subsquatch, which is in an inflatable surfboard. Um, some of you guys may have seen Jamie O'Brien taking that thing out at, uh, at Waimea Bay in Hawaii. But um, unfortunately, <laughs> we don't have waves that get that big here. Yeah, talk uh, a little bit about the surf and, and the type of beaches we have here. Yeah, so we normally have shore break. Today it's pretty small. Um, there's, there's almost no waves today, which is good. <laughs> Um, sometimes we get surf uh, during the summer. Uh, if that's the case, we try to keep the kids a little closer to the shore, uh, a little safer, and safer in shallower water. We have a lot of um, lot of shore breaks, so that means the waves are breaking really close to shore in shallow water. So um, you gotta make sure you're always protecting your head when you're going surfing, body surfing. You always want your hands out in front of you. Uh, Very cool. Yeah, and you want to show us about the rescue equipment, the other stuff you're teaching them about? Yeah, so Hugh here has a spinal board. This is a spinal immobilization board. So if somebody injures their neck or back while body surfing, uh, we try to get them onto this board uh, to kind of keep them from not moving, and that way uh, they won't injure themselves further. Um, it's not exactly the most comfortable thing in the world, but... Um, <laughs> It benefits you greatly uh, in transport from here if you need to go to the hospital, to the hospital as well. Um, and then down here, we got the basic tool of every lifeguard. We got our fins and we have a buoy here. And these are your basic tools. Uh, anytime we ever have to make any rescues, this is what we got. So. Very cool. And with junior lifeguards, you're teaching you kids the basics. Can you show us how to put the buoy on? So this, is, this isn't what we run around with. We get a rescue ready. Wrap it. Nice. Like so. So it's nice and secure. Dialed in. And then when we're running out to a rescue, we have our fins in one hand. Only another one. You can pop it for them. As you hit that water. Here we go. Nice. And he's off. <laughs> Very cool. We just had someone say they're up in the Lake Tahoe area with their kids. Not sure if they have a junior lifeguard program or a similar type thing up there, but we do have lifeguards on lakes here in California, which is an interesting fun fact. Usually everyone thinks of lifeguards just being at the beach, but some of our parks do include the lake habitat. And if he was on a rescue, he'd be in the water right now swimming. If I'm the person needing rescue or help, give me the buoy, tell me to turn around, face the ocean, and then so is this something that you would teach the junior lifeguards to do? Absolutely. We te uh, this is actually one of my favorite lessons to teach is the uh, teaching of how to do rescues because the kids get really into it when we uh, make rescues on the sand. They'll drag each other all over the sand and um, learning how to do it. But from here, once we got them clipped in, then that's where we swim them to shore. And take them back in. Take them back in. Well, Very cool. If you're a junior lifeguard and you want to be a lifeguard someday, that's a huge advantage. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely. Um, we just had someone say their daughter or son is a competitive swimmer. So we get a lot of swimmers and water polo players, and this is also good cross-training once you get older and in high school. And the best thing about a junior lifeguard program is it teaches your kids to be safe in the ocean. So when they're older and more independent and they go to the beach by themselves, you feel very comfortable as a parent letting your kids go to the beach by on their own, that they're going to be safe. Here at Crystal Cove, we make sure that all kids are comfortable in the water and they know all the safety needed. Yeah, it's a great program. And someone mentioned we do have these programs all throughout the state. We are a little biased and we do think Crystal Cove's program is one of the best. Um, but we do offer them from San Diego all the way up north. Um, so check out online at um, our parks website to learn more. I just um, to add something too about... Uh how this created a career for me. I started out as a junior lifeguard and then 
did that for six years and then went on to become a, a lifeguard in the tower and now I've made a career out of it so who knows you know if you like being outside and you like being at the beach especially a beautiful beach like Crystal Cove State Park where the sand is so clean <laughs> and, and this is a natural yeah. environment I mean this is a state marine conservation area so doesn't get much better than this here this in is Southern a very California setting there's wildlife here there's bobcats there's coyotes there's whales going by otters. dolphins there's otters here we have uh, orcas. Orcas. amazing world-class tide pools here where you can find stuff like Hugh was showing uh, and so it's just it's a really unique and diverse uh, ecosystem Got a question about any cougars, also known as mountain lions, and we do not. Our park boundary is a little bit too small. We have about 2,800 acres, and mountain lions need about 5,000 acres, um, also known as pumas, that's correct. Uh, we don't have any here, um, maybe further east or up in Los Angeles County. We do have bobcats, though. Occasionally, we'll see a bobcat strolling down the trail. But we're going to get ready to wrap things up here. I want to see if anyone has any last-minute questions for our California State lifeguards or about the lifeguard program. So we'll take one last look up the beach. And we've got to show the jet ski, too, our PWC rescue equipment is really cool. We always have this out ready to go. So this is our jet ski. Uh, this is my favorite piece of rescue equipment that we have here. Um, it can go up to about 65 miles an hour on the water. Um, and what it allows us, because uh, because of our park's diversity and the amount of tide pools, sometimes we can't get our truck all the way in to where we need it to be uh, to assist with the rescue. Um, so if we have this out and about in the water, uh, it allows us to get in and out. We can get from one end of the park all the way to the other side in about three minutes, um, three to five minutes where, um, in a truck it might take upwards of 10 15 minutes so in the event of emergency in the water this gets us there really quickly yeah very um, useful rescue tool yes and this is our this is our rescue sled so when they actually uh we actually pick up a victim of a rescue we uh, have them get onto this and then we can take them to a safer area where another one of our guards can come either get them and bring them in the rest of the way or we can uh we can take them if we need to over to the harbor uh which is Oops. about five miles uh, north of our location from here. So. It is like a giant boogie board, except it has permanent handles, a lot of equipment, and it's much larger it's than a boogie board. It's also inflatable. It's also <laughs> inflatable. So this um, this is an inflated, it's it's like a giant balloon. How many people could you rescue on this at once? Um, probably 10 people or so. Yeah, it's so very buoyant. Very we, cool. can have, we can have a bunch of people hold on, maybe not driving them, uh, but we can definitely have several I'm people hold on to, to the it side. all at once. Yeah. Um, another good thing about this is that we can tow boats. We do have a lot of boat traffic here and uh, if they get in trouble before Harbor Patrol can get out there we can get this out there and tow them uh, out a little bit further into the safer deeper water before they get too close to shore. Yeah uh, things have come a long way since the 80s. Someone's saying better tools than they saw in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And we are getting a lot of questions about shark attacks. We do want to address the fact that this is the Pacific Ocean. There are sharks out here right now. Um, we've been seeing an increased amount due to all the drones and the extra footage, but we're not experts on shark migration or shark feeding patterns, so we're not really able to comment on that. Um, we might be doing another periscope specifically about sharks um, later, so stay yeah, tuned stay um, for more action about sharks. I'll just mention that I paddled this beach, the stretch of beach this morning, looking for sharks and didn't see anything, so. Yeah, very cool. Someone said they could be out there right now and that's that's correct. Yeah, we've got large sharks. We've also got smaller sharks like leopard and horn sharks, some of my favorite, that are only about two or three feet large and very important part of our ecosystem here. So our marine protected areas are protecting all animals from whales and sharks down to crabs, lobsters, and even the plankton out here. So thanks guys, we're gonna get ready to wrap things up. These guys have a busy day and a busy weekend ahead of them. Can you remind me, I just need to uh, give a quick update on our tryout schedule. So we had a lot of tryouts in Huntington Beach and we have one scheduled for June 8th in Costa Mesa at Costa Mesa High School. And we're adding more uh, this week. So stay tuned on the website, please. We have uh, more tryouts that we're adding. For our probably, junior lifeguard program. Probably in Newport Beach and probably in Aliso Viejo. So those are the two 
pools that we're looking at right now. And uh, you can find out more by calling our junior lifeguard line. And that's 949-497-5049. Uh, Very cool. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, we're really excited for this summer. We'll end things off with a fun selfie here. So let me turn it around. Let's see. Oh, we're looking at the sky. Uh, uh, and uh, wait, wait. Wait, <laughs> wait for it. There we go. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Have a great summer. Swim near a lifeguard. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye.